Yeah. Uh, good evening, all. Welcome to the 24th session of the Center Webinar Series for Teachers. Great to have us. Uh, you know, great to have you with uh, with us today, this Monday evening. Uh, I can see a bunch of familiar names in the comment section. Welcome. Uh, as has been the case in the last 23 sessions, we'll be learning something new today. And this webinar is going to focus on design thinking. And we have a really, really special facilitator for the evening, Ms. Reshma Budhia. Hi, Reshma. Hi. Good evening. So, just a quick intro. Uh, Reshma is a certified design thinking specialist from Emeritus MIT Sloan School of Management. And she's completed her PG diploma in breakthrough innovation and design thinking. She is uh, the managing partner at Toss the Coin, a marketing technology firm based in Chennai. She consults for small and large businesses. She works with companies to conceptualize and build marketing roadmap using emerging technology solutions. Her key role includes brand and strategy, consulting, content creation, UX UI consulting, uh, growth strategy planning and execution. Uh, she's a specialist in design thinking methodology, something which we're going to focus today. And she uses uh, this to build innovative solutions. Uh, she's currently working with multiple learning institutions and educators, and she's helping them to put their core strategy and content in place using this framework. Uh, 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 she, she's, she was recently recognized as one of the exceptional women of excellence in 2018 by Women's Economic Forum. Congratulations on that, Reshma. Uh, Reshma is an avid reader, and she consumes content like candies. She is passionate about right to education and has worked with multiple social organizations to promote education. Uh, Reshma is also the co-founder at Gift Your Organ Foundation. This foundation works to create awareness on the importance of organ donation in India. Thanks a lot for that, Reshma. I really, really appreciate the cause. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Kathix, for the lovely introduction. And good evening, everybody. Before I can even get started, I first need to, you know, thank all of you teachers out there. We are in a very unprecedented times and I know that you have the toughest job possible. Being a parent, I can completely, you know, see the kind of hard work that you have been putting in making sure that our children continue to learn the way they need to learn and don't really find or feel the gap right and that's a great job so thank you everybody thank you so much for the good job and in any way we as parents can help we are right here for you so having said that let's move on to a very interesting 45 to 50 minutes of a subject called design thinking i'm not sure how many of y'all are familiar with design thinking but i would say that for all of you teachers it's going to feel extremely familiar and extremely intuitive because the entire framework of design thinking has been built on the psychology of putting the user in the center and you have been doing that all throughout however what could be interesting for you is just the fact that you know we have in the whole framework bundles in tools and techniques that are so interesting and so handy that you can pick it up at any point of time and start using it to open up new ideas or to understand a user better or to define and reframe a problem better. Before I can even jump into the session, I have a little story, a very short story for you just to lay the foundation of design thinking. One of the airports many years ago in uh, South Asia was constantly looking at customer feedback and constantly looking at the CCTV videos and the number of rounds that their electric cars were making within the airport from the terminals to the uh, restroom or from the ticketing or the waiting rooms to the restroom. And what they figured was that a lot of the senior citizens were obviously, according to them, were obviously using the restroom a lot more and they had to make that journey. And they had to make sure that, you know, they were constantly going in every 15 minutes and it was a long journey for them. We've all heard and seen these airports. They are huge, the international airports. So the airport authority said, hey, should we construct more toilets? Is that what we need? Very fairly obvious answer would have been yes. But there was a design thinker amongst them. And the design thinker said, I think it's important that we actually first figure out what, hap what is happening. What is going on? All right. 
And that is when they started taking a lot of interviews, talking to the senior citizens and just understanding why, you know, do you think the number of restrooms are less or what, where are we here? And here is a very surprising discovery that they made. The reason the senior citizens were actually visiting the restroom was not really to use the restroom, but these are all extremely noisy airports. Okay, and they were having a tough time trying to listen to the announcements. And the restroom was one place where the announcements were clearer, and it, they would therefore the fear of missing out on any gate change or last minute announcement was not there. So it was not really to use the restroom. It was for a completely different reason, which needed a completely different solution. And that is where design thinking comes into the picture. This was, this is one of my favorite examples because we've all been there and done that, right? And we understand where this is coming from. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen so we can actually, yes. So I hope all of you can um, see my screen. This is a very famous and favorite quote by Albert Einstein and we all know it and understand it. And this is what we've been working towards. We're talking about how education has completely shifted from not just being about facts and figures and statistics and data, but there's just the whole training of mind that needs to happen. Almost every school has started looking at shifting their method of teaching from rote learning to applied learning. The whole applied learning would really imply that we are looking at their children to actually, um, you know, put in action what they have learned so that they can think, so that they can train their muscles, you know, the brain muscles and start thinking and push the boundaries and come up with solution. So what, what exactly happened here, right? The whole shift from facts to thinking, what is it all about? Very clearly, it's all about the mindset. It's the mindset that makes the whole difference. When you are willing to not believe that the senior citizens are using the washroom to use the washroom, but are instead willing to go and find out and figure out what the actual, actual reason here is, you have actually brought about a shift in your mindset. And you've actually decided to tell yourself that hey, I want to look at alternates. What else is out there? Is this the only way? Is this the only answer? This mindset is what needs to be cultivated. This mindset is what we are all now working to develop from even the youngest of kids, you know, from the pre-KG or even play school onwards to as the children grow, to as the parents grow, to as the teachers grow, uh, gain experience and mature. It literally forms in the middle of all of these things, the mindset. In fact, you all must be aware of the changes that the NEP 2020 vision is, has been talking about, the new education system, you know, that we are talking about implementing soon enough. And some of the very key traits or skills that they are talking about to impart in children is complex problem solving, critical thinking, cognitive flexibility, emotional intelligence, and creativity. These have been called out specifically. And the fact that these are being called out, it's not really just in India. This is something that every country is looking at from their education system. Hey, how can we make our children problem solvers? How can we impart creative confidence in them? help them build their critical thinking. How do we develop the emotional intelligence of the child so he continues to be secure and she or he continues to grow and be flexible in how the world evolves. And that is the focus also that we're talking about from NEP 2020 vision. Now, thanks to the whole structure and the framework in which design thinking has been constructed, it literally encompasses each one of these skills, which it brings about in different parts and ensures that everybody who learns the system has actually is actually going to follow it and is actually going to build it and develop it. 
that is where we are when we talk about what does design thinking do it is going to act, you know go ahead and attack or i would say not attack but develop the mindset that we are talking about so that the next time you're looking at a child and the next time a child is going to be sitting and reading something it's to solve a problem not to get it right and you know make the teacher happy there's a huge difference that's the shift that's the perspective change that we're talking about and that is where we are all already working to but sometimes need better methods sometimes we need a structure a framework that will tell us that do these seven things and do it at these points of time and you're going to be able to come out having changed the mindset of the participant of the student of the parent of the educator whoever that person could be in your ecosystem that framework is where we are all sitting and saying exploring how can we use that framework why why do you think we are all looking at that framework why do you think all of you are here or why do you think you know you've been anxious about a lot of things because you know that as teachers you are bang in the middle of the future of the country you know that as teacher anything and everything that you are going to do to that one child becomes a collective action for many children which becomes a compounded action for a whole society and that is why you are probably struggling with a lot of your own issues you are struggling with a lot of questions a lot of things that you are running in your mind it could be just about the fact that look my communication with parents is just not effective anymore i i was getting to see them face to face there was a connection but now as i have new students in the new year new academic year i have not met the parents i'm not able to gauge what their involvement is i'm unable to gauge what their challenges could be probably a question running on your mind or it could be just that attention span of students is reducing each year why is that what is happening why are they so distracted all the time we can't blame the covid 19 for that we've been noticing that for a few years now i've had multiple conversations with teachers and they are noticing that for few years now and we're trying to figure out okay what's happening what do we do here or if you just think about the assessment we are all in the new normal can a child be assessed in a similar manner is it going to work what about the system that i had put in place what about the successful system that i was already following can i continue to use that even in today's time with the new normal does it make sense how far away am i from that it's a question you're probably grappling with or just the fact that i have multiple learning levels in my class it's a completely remote model now what do i do where do i go from here how do i fix it the online classroom doesn't give every student a voice right they're all on mute only when you ask a question can they unmute themselves and rightly so uh, it's the it's the only way to manage a classroom but is it an effective way wouldn't you have loved to have an alternate solution wouldn't you have actually loved to say hey what can i do so that the child continues to hear the chatter that they are so used to listening to in class because that adds on to developing their social skills we are completely missing out on the social skills today or even something as simple as i want to convert my courses into training programs i don't want to just be a teacher or an educator i want to become an entrepreneur an entrepreneur or an entrepreneur you may want to be looking at that because the world has literally opened up now everyone's gone remote and so it's a flat world for people who want to explore new opportunities so what can i do how can i do with all of these questions running in your mind sometimes it's just too big the question seems too big the immediate three answers seems like the only three answers that you're ever going to get and that is where you're stuck 
because you box yourself in that little thinking and say hey how what who do i speak to how do i go about it what what do i do about it next or can i just think about it and leave it and say okay never mind we'll come to it later on what can we do about it that is where design thinking comes in it gives you a framework for creative problem solving problem solving is inherent to all of us especially you teachers i think you are solving problems that even you know parents have not thought of it's something that you have to just solve on the go you are in the class and the child ask a question and it could be really vague but you need to give an answer or just a problem that they had which could seem too small for somebody else but you know it's important for the child and you're going to solve it for them but what design thinking does is creative problem solving the key word is creative not creative from an art point of view creating from pushing the boundaries of our brains and trying to go into the third fourth fifth layer of ideas and into our subconscious mind and seeing okay where am i how far am i from the answer question can i just diverge from the topic completely and then come back to my topic what should i do that is what design thinking does by definition it is a dynamic creative collaborative approach i'm leaving this slide here for the next few minutes so you can actually read it because it's important for you to just read it a bit loud and just take in the words because every word here adds value to the framework of design thinking here it's all about increasing the scope for ideation and brainstorming so that the participants are not just learning but they are thinking and engaging let me give you another story here and this is a story from one of the schools uh, in the west there was an english literature teacher melissa pelon uh, pelochino so her name was melissa pelochino she was an english literature teacher who was uh making the kids this this is middle school kids read a novel that was based or themed around bullying of students bullying of children and she wanted to do something innovative she wanted to figure out how she can use design thinking as a process and get the children to look at bullying from maybe a completely different perspective she had she didn't know where the answer was but she of course told them hey why don't you come back to me with some ideas on how can we handle tackle bullying in our school and she left it at that she did not try to guide the children she did not try to explain to them how to go about it she just left it at that and so the children are already creative right we all know that and being creative they decided to go ahead and discuss in groups and talk to each other and came back with multiple ideas most of these ideas were built around the concept of storytelling which is excellent because they knew she's a literature teacher and they had to build in storytelling somewhere there right so it was built around the concept of storytelling and they said we can actually create stories we can actually talk about you know uh, how bullying is uh, bullies are uh, affect the child or the victim now she told them why don't you go and recreate a bullying scenario and watch the users watch the victim watch the bully watch everybody and she gave them the whole process slowly took them through the design thinking process and waited for them to come back with the solution very interestingly this is what they came back with they they figured bullying as a problem also includes the bystanders the bystanders who are not taking any action the bystanders who watch the bullying occur and walk away and instead of targeting the bullies who by themselves are insecure people low on confidence aggressive arrogant why don't we tackle the bystanders because today the bystanders are more in numbers and if they can come forward it's automatically going to discourage a bully brilliant right it's just the change of perspective because the method or the framework allowed the children to not just look at the bully which is the most obvious person to look at when you're looking at a problem but to look at the all the users involved to look at the users and say hey 
who are they who are these users is we have the victim we have the bully but we also have the bystanders can we understand each of them separately can we talk to them separately why did they walk away were they afraid were they scared were they not concerned just the fact that they start asking these questions for the different user groups opens up a world for them and that world is a world of empathy that is the world that we want them to be in it is that world which is their starting point this is what the framework tells you now the next question is of course the users they've identified their primary user they've identified the bystander and got a lot of points from the bystander so let's redefine our problem correct now you're not talking about how do we discourage bullies you have actually reframed your problem statement to how do we encourage bystanders to do the right thing how do we go about it how do we make bystanders also be responsible for what just occurred when they were around they have defined the problem from a completely different perspective because the framework of design thinking allows them to and it forces them to do that you first need to define the right problem to solve the problem so after you've empathized you've actually gone ahead and reframed your problem because the user has changed for you at this point it gets really easy to go ahead and start looking at the different ideas that you can bring to the table right ideation is an extremely important critical and major step in design thinking the best part is this framework allows you to actually go wild you cannot be in your comfort zone you have to think of the wildest idea what if the bystander was a superhero in disguise yes could be it's possible every idea ends with a phrase called it's possible but and then you build on it that's the that's the basic rule of ideation in design thinking it's possible but what if the bystander was actually a mentor of sorts who understands that this bully now needs a buddy so i'm going to become his best friend yes it's possible you're not judging you're not thinking if it's practical because the entire framework of ideation in the subject of design thinking actually forces you to come up with an average of 25 ideas Uh, come on how do you come up with 25 ideas if you want them all to be sensible ideas doable ideas feasible ideas it's not possible if i take away all these three you know necessities that no they need not be sensible they need not be doable they need not be feasible they can be as wild as you want it to be then you can come up with 25 ideas not think give how it would be to these young children who are already full of ideas that are not feasible and you literally told them you don't need to have ideas that make sense give me anything and everything you want to they're going to come up with i think 50 60 70 ideas not just 25 it's that encouragement that needs to happen consciously we may be doing it sometimes and not doing it sometimes why don't we do it sometimes because it takes time which is the next beauty of design thinking it boxes you inside a time limit come up with 25 ideas in only 12 minutes and you start a timer that's it it may seem impossible but by the time you reach the 7th or the 8th minute you are actually thinking super fast ideas because that is where subconsciously we are sitting and we've now reached that point where we can actually start looking at wild and weird ideas and the time limit allows us to keep moving and progressing because in design thinking there is a lot of scope for iteration it's all about iteration it's all about coming back to the drawing board as many times as you want and completely starting from a different path 
because there is no right there is no wrong and that is where the complete sense the se- you know the sense of completeness comes you don't mind you're saying hey i don't mind 12 minutes is fine i think i can live with that and manage it and after this within the whole ideation there are multiple tools and techniques that the framework has we're talking about um, methods like random word brainstorming which i will show you an example today we're talking about um, anchor and sail brainstorming technique rose bud and thorns technique or what why wow technique crazy eight the crazy number of brainstorming tools and techniques that you can learn as a part of ideation and literally pull out from your bag when you need it none of these things within design thinking needs to happen in a sequential manner you can always jump to idea come back to empathize rebuild and go back to idea while it's good to have a sequence only because you we want to make sure that you're following it you can always come back and forth and these uh, tools and techniques are like a hammer of course we know that you need the hammer to you know put a nail in but you can use the hammer to draw a nail out to break open a lock to break a glass to hit somebody to attack somebody you can just use it for so many other things it's a tool that you have in your hand and that's how these brainstorming techniques are they are tools that you can keep with you and bring it out as and when you need it and this is when you start moving to prototyping in the education system prototyping i i th- i feel that prototyping is uh, already existing getting kids to make chart papers little models craft you know getting them to create something quickly and say hey this is how you just do it with whatever is available a pen and paper and things like that so prototype already exists it's just that when it follows an ideation stage now you have a structure you know what exactly you're creating the mistake we do otherwise is we jump to prototype as soon as a problem has been given to us ideally empathize define and ideate should take 70% of the time to solve a problem and only 30% of the time should be spent on prototyping and testing the idea that's how we ensure that we are actually not getting caught up in solution sometimes we get caught in a solution we believe we know the answer and we refuse to look at other answers you believe that you already know that bully is a problem the bully and he needs to be mentored she needs to be guided they need to be actually you know put into some program and talked to or disciplined and you just jump to that but if you do the first three steps you realize there is a bystander and we never spoke about them we never looked at the bystander and we said hey why don't we look at them and how do we sort it out right so that is where we need to bring the whole thing now if you look at the entire stage of design thinking here and all the five stages it incorporates different things like critical thinking creative thinking um pattern identification okay these are the different skills it incorporates because when you are in the stage of define you are actually pushing your critical thinking boundaries and i'm going to quickly show you with an example because it's going to help you understand what i'm saying we may not be able to do the ideate and prototype and test but we can definitely make sure that we understand what is this empathy and define that here, you know that reshma is talking about i do have a question here which and i'm going to read it out because it uh, completely fits in with what i'm uh, talking about right now this is from supriya and she says does design thinking integrate skills like critical thinking and complex decision making so like i said of course it deals with critical thinking as an extremely defined module we have a 6 hour module on critical thinking at that point of time we're not talking about these five stages but we are only talking about the different factors and um, elements that need to come in to build your critical thinking but does it teach complex decision making 
it actually teaches to simplify decision making it actually teaches you to take risk with your decisions it the best part about defi- uh, design thinking is at the stage of define here define is not the solution define is the problem at the stage of define it helps you decompose the problem into many 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 problems when i was doing a workshop with one of my client and you know the big question they came up with is how can i bring more clients in this covid 19 times when we sat and broke down his uh, users and when we sat and you know understood came up with the problem statement that one question how can i bring in more clients actually we were able to break it down into 30 mini questions how does that happen because of your critical thinking right that happens because you are in a position to look at the complete problem from a different angle 30 mini questions can you believe that now all they need to do is look at each one of those and see what decision it could lead to and eventually put an impact versus effort and decide what they should do it it's like a big thing sorted out if one method didn't work you know there are so many other methods that's going to work i do have a second question which says what can be the other alternate to assess students it's a brilliant question and ideally it would be amazing to actually do a workshop right using this question as our primary problem statement and moving forward but let me let me show you a method and maybe ranjana you could you know use this question as a method and see if you can do what i'm saying you to do okay let's try it that way so before i even move to you know the example stage here something i just want to leave with you and take a screenshot if you need to for this slide because it really tells you what does therefore design thinking mean from an educator's point of view it's all of, it's human centered obviously but what does that mean it means not just looking at the child or the student looking at you looking at the parent looking at the administration looking at the policy makers looking at different startups and entrepreneurs and seeing how this ecosystem is impacting and affecting each other and where, how can you add value to it or become a part of it the whole idea here is to bring in the mindset to engage with your students to talk to them it's okay if you know the curriculum did not get over on time because you got an insight that is valuable or they got an insight that was valuable to make it extremely collaborative is it tough in today's time yes it is tough is it impossible no when corporates can do it all corporates are today talking about collaboration and they're actually doing it even in a remote setup i've been a part of all of those workshops where we're literally brainstorming with you know 35 people in different parts of geography using our laptops and some very interesting tools like which gives you access to online whiteboards and posters so yes you if you make it a mandate you will find an option to do it building in storytelling which all of you do naturally but the storytelling from different user perspective and making it very experimental and experiential what does that mean two big words in design thinking it means allowing yourself and allowing your student to make mistakes creating a safe space where they can be silly where they can give you wild ideas where they can make mistakes and where they can think out of the box that is what it means here so this is what it means from educator's point of view now let's uh, you know quickly looking at time i'm just going to quickly move to giving you one very simple way of how can you create empathy stories right because empathy is as simple as creating a one line story this is a very simple template that we use sometimes to create a story about a user it forces you to look at the user what is their motivation and what is the result they are trying to achieve i'll show it to you with examples of course for example if we look at the first question i had in my earlier slide it's important to manage multiple level learning in class you just have to twist it and use the template as a teacher 
I want to ensure that multiple levels of learnings can be managed so I can do justice to every child. It's making the problem statement complete for you. You get the motivation in place and you also figure out the result you want. It, it just opens up your thinking and it makes it sound like a possible thing. I want to convert my course into training program or versus as a teacher, I want to offer my courses as online training programs so I can have an additional source of income. Why not? Right? You are re-looking at the com from an empathy from your user perspective point of view. The online classroom doesn't give every student a voice. As a student, I want to have productive interaction in class so that they can be engaged, active and interested. Right? The assessment needs to include new factors in the new normal. As a teacher, I want to reimagine the assessment so it can be relevant to this new normal. Just the rephrasing itself starts opening your thoughts and your thinking to certain possibilities, certain new possibilities that you may not have thought of. Just a simple rephrasing. If you can just rephrase your problem statement by using this template, as a, I want to, so I can. That is your first step towards empathy. Of course, when we get into the details and eventually we are looking at this as an ongoing masterclass, if we get into the details, we're going to be talking about creating empathy maps. We're going to be talking about creating life in the, a day in the life of a user, you know, about actually their motivators and their distractors. But this is a simple takeaway for you to get started on that journey a bit, right? And so with this, um, if we take this as an example, as a teacher, I want to monetize my teaching skills so I can have an additional source of income. We can use this as today's example. So you'll already notice that you have identified a user story. This itself is telling a story. Rather than just saying, how can I make money that, you know, how can I make more money? Why can't I go out and create some programs? They sound so flimsy and they sound like a wish list. This sounds concrete. That is where we are. So let's park this because you know we can use this to understand the second stage, which is define. The define, let me remind you again and again, is not define a solution. It's define the problem. This has not yet told me my problem. This has only told me what I want to do as a user okay now i need to define my problem and that problem we're going to define using something very interesting a phrase called how might we how might we is one of the most effective phrases in design thinking and is literally like the mantra of design thinking the idea here is that how allows you to get into an explorer's mindset right the minute you say how instead of what what pushes you to think of solution? We don't want you to think solution yet. We just want you to explore. But at the same time, might tells you you may get a solution, you may not. Because as a design thinker, you should be open to iterate. You should be open to coming back to the, you know, that is where the allowing for mistake happens. So it tells you that you may or may not find a solution. And we makes it collective. Although how might I is also okay. Sometimes we brainstorm alone. But anyways, uh, we is all about making it collective. You feel like you need to talk to a lot more people and collaborate to come up with an idea. So how might we? Now, what do we do? How do we come up with how might we? There's a very interesting activity called the random word activity. Okay. We already saw this as our uh, problem statement. We're saying, okay, as a teacher, I want to monetize. So I can have additional source of income. What does that mean? So the next stage, what we're going to do is we're going to forget all of that, put it aside and just think of a random word. My random word for today is aeroplane. You can think of any random word not connected to this subject at all. And now try and come up with 25 associated words using aeroplane as your central word. Okay, I've not given 25 here because I wanted to make sure that we all understand what you look at. But this is what I mean by associated words, if you look at it. So an aeroplane makes me think of the sky, the blue, the sun, 
fly, pilot, fear, passport. Aeroplane makes me think about the Wright brothers, which means, you know, I'm thinking of invention. It makes me think about crash and hijack, holiday, which takes me to coronavirus and lockdown. You, all of you know mind mapping, so we don't have to really get into the depth. Idea here, here is to pick a random word, a random word, do a mind mapping around it and come up with these different associated words. Okay, this is where we are actually following the principle of diverging. You have diverged away from your topic. You were talking about monetizing and suddenly you are now talking about some random word. But next is where we converge. We come back to our problem statement. Monetizing my teaching skills. Okay, this is what I want to do. What do I do? I actually go back to this and I say, let me pick three words from here and use that as a trigger to create my, uh, to define my how might we. So for example, holiday. Now my question can be, how might we monetize my teaching skills so I can earn even when I'm not working? Like, or so I can earn when I'm on a holiday, right? So you've suddenly taken and broken it down. This is called decomposition of a problem. You've broken it down into a smaller statement. Now you're already thinking of different ideas because your mind has gone into a different zone. The second word I picked was crash. How might we use mini cheat sheets and crash courses to monetize my teaching skills? Again, it's a completely different train of thought. Maybe they are connected, maybe they are not connected. But the point is it opens up your mind. And the third word I picked up was passport. How might we design courses that act as a passport for larger training programs? So maybe you can collaborate with a lot of teachers and you can say, hey, you know, they do this small training program that will make them eligible to do the next one, which will make them eligible to do the final program. Can we build it together? Can we give them a passport of sorts, which is recognized across all major schools? So they know that they've learned these skills and they can keep graduating to the next skill. Almost like a report card, but a lot more inclusive, a lot more glamorous, I would say. It talks about skills and not subjects. Possible. It's literally beginning to open up your mind to a lot of different ideas. And it's those different ideas that we have to consider and and this is just three of the words I picked up, okay, mind you, from the random word. We can pick up so many more. And just look at it from a completely, you know, it changes the way we relook at monetizing teaching skills. It allows us to now ideate on three different questions rather than that one big question. That itself is a great step forward. You, I mean, you know, you're going to agree with that, right? Because just how can I monetize my teaching skills? And suddenly it seems too big. But when you say, okay, when I'm not working, so are we talking about uh, recorded classes? Are we talking about doing some animation videos, voiceovers, podcasts? Okay, if I'm going to do podcasts, should it be small stories that I tell people about uh, different situations that's happened in my, in my journey as a teacher and what are the different things I learned from that. It's automatically going to teach kids and parents something. So yes, maybe I could do that. Or how might we use mini cheat sheets and crash courses? Not a great question, I would say, which is okay because you can go back to the drawing board and pick a second uh, trigger word. But anyways, so you're, you know, we're talking about a crash course. So you can start talking, thinking of which subjects need crash course. What is that crash course going to be all about? And again, you'll say, maybe I do recorded classes or podcast around it. And like I said, for the third one, you know, can it be a skill based report card, not subject based report card, which will be accepted across institutions? Can we work on something like that? It's just opening up your mind to new possibilities and we are only in stage two of design thinking. Because clearly we, it's not, we're not going to be able to move to the stage three, but just having defined the problem statement itself opens the possibilities of new ideas. And it takes us to a next stage where you can talk about ideation. Like I said, ideation has a lot of options, a lot of opportunities, and it needs time but you can learn those tools and techniques and apply it anywhere quickly. 
even the random work, you can literally apply it in the define stage, in the empathy stage, in the ideate stage. It doesn't matter. The principle is the same. Diverge away, move away, zone out of your problem. Look at something completely random. Now use that to trigger some new thoughts. So then we're nudging our brains, right? We're like literally forcing our brains to connect monetizing teaching skills with passport. You're forcing yourself. And when you're forcing, it opens up a brilliant idea of a skill-based report card. And you're like saying, okay, maybe, I think it's possible, we can do it. But if you hadn't gone into the random word, you may not have come up with this. Just so just imagine if one tool like random word can be this flexible when you learn the other tools. And if you had to know those other tools, how flexible this is going to make for all of us, right? It's these mini challenges that you can easily take to the idea board and say, okay, what, what shall we do about it? How shall we go about it? I'm going to just uh, stop sharing the screen here and I'll check if we have any more questions before I move to the final stage. Okay. And uh, the final stage is really just more of a conclusion or summing up of what we have done. And we will make sure that if you have any questions, we can li literally, you know, cover it up because one hour is not enough. It's just like an introduction. Technically, we're talking about every stage and spending one and a half hours making it extremely collaborative where I can see your faces first of all <laughs> and where we can then start interact or at least chat personally and interact and make you draw the empathy map right so if that is what we it is I'm going to read a few comments in case I come up with a question uh, Karthik maybe if you've noted some questions let me know because that is going to make that I'll make sure that I'm not missing out on anything Sure, sure. Uh, so just a quick announcement. Uh, uh, some of you were uh, requesting for the, uh, you know, the feedback form. We're going to follow the same drill that we've been doing in the last, you know, uh, for the last few weeks. You need to go to my center, the same place uh, that you used to register for the session, m.center.org from your mobile browser. There you'll see the banner. Uh, and when you click on that, you'll see the form. And as uh, Reshma said, uh, you know, we, we have a question in there and you can record your interest if you are interested to attend a masterclass by uh, Reshma. So you can record your interest there and, you know, uh, 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 and, and we'll, we'll get back to you with the details. So it's, it's there in that form itself. Right. And there were a couple of questions uh, which, which, you know, uh, uh, which I saw. One, I suppose, was uh, from Ms. Priyanka Dori. And she seems to be already using design framework, uh, you know, in, in her classes. And I think her question was, uh, uh, yeah, yes, there's, there's the question. We are already doing design thinking with students can easily be incorporated but i want some guidance for the prototype and testing yes priyanka so this is excellent congratulations for actually already be doing it it takes a lot of effort um let me tell you prototyping and testing can be done virtually <laughs> and the reason i'm saying this very confidently is let us all remember that you are no less than a senior VP, a CEO, a COO in any corporate organization. And when these large corporate organizations can do prototyping of an entire app and a product virtually, why can't we do this with our students virtually? Look, age becomes a very important factor because if you're going to use an online interest, I'll give you name of a tool called Mural, M-U-R-A-L, okay? Mural.co. Now, if you go to mural.co, it allows you to create interactive whiteboards and post-its. And you can start using that to figure out how to create prototypes. We can get into the depth of it, you know, when we do advanced sessions. But to answer your question, simply it's possible. There was another very interesting question by Devati, ma'am. Uh, sorry, I'll come to yes. Paul's also, but I didn't sure. want to miss the other one. So mm -hmm. she was talking about how do you manage time because these are all only one hour sessions. Like I said, design thinking insists on timing workshops and on, on timing activities. So there's something called crazy eight. Crazy eight is an ideation technique which has to be done in eight minutes. You're forcing your students to come up with eight ideas in eight minutes. 
random word has to be done in 12 minutes okay so 25 ideas that we put up on an anchor and seal i typically give about 12 to 13 minutes so you're actually timing and following the timing our brains work best under panic we all know that we can, we are the most creative when we are in a panic situation and that is the formula that we're using here so i think the time managed question has been answered uh, we can move to the previous one please yeah i, I think it was uh, uh, mohit was asking if there are books that you know one could refer to Definitely, you can actually. There's a lot of reading material online. Just go and look for design thinking for educators. That keyword itself will throw up crazy options for you. Other than that, you can refer to a website, uh, ideo, ideo.com, ideo.com. They have reading material, they have reference materials, they have online courses also that you can take, short courses to equip yourself with this. And by and large, it's, there's a lot written around design thinking. Um, you know, of course, I'm, uh, it, it's, it, it's all there. Don't worry. So that's what, when you talk about specifically in higher education, not really. So these are all concepts and uh, standalone ideas that have been put. If you know the subject, you can make a lot of sense. You can connect them and weave them together and sort of make sure that, you know, you have the answers. I'll probably just quickly, one second, show you, maybe you can just make a note of, uh, you know, the, I, I write a lot around design thinking on my Instagram page. So you can go ahead and just follow me there or send me an email and I can start responding back with the links that I usually refer to. Maybe a few books that you can buy around design thinking that's gonna help you. There's a very good book called Creative Confidence. And that book is what you should buy by the, either a PDF or online, I mean, ebook or a physical book and refer because it will give you a lot of ideas for building creative thinking and creative confidence in the students. So, yes, I hope you made a note of this. This is one way of doing it. And I suppose Priyanka Ma'am is another question. Yes. Nowadays, when the students are at home, how will they design the product in their they may not be able to design it as a team or groups and it is missing out see this is only going this is not a permanent situation we are not going to be in this situation forever so at the moment you can actually focus on them doing it individually and sketching it out teach them how to constantly sketch out their prototypes it's an extremely important part children need to know that they don't have to be an artist to create sketches the first time I did design thinking with my seven-year-old uh, son, it was on how might we redesign my school bag. And he came up with brilliant ideas for the school bag itself. But when I wanted him to sketch it out as a prototype, he refused to. He said, oh, I don't know drawing. Can you open Google? Can you show me reference of a bag? Mindset. Seven-year-old had that mind block. And you help them come out of that itself is a great step in prototyping. And that could be your point one. I hope that helps. Hmm. I, to some extent, do this in class. But the problem now is that being in online class in 130, 135 student numbers, yes, <laughs> it is difficult. And it is going to be a tough one. Treat it like a like a snack in between. In between your class, give a 10 minutes break and just give them a simple exercise. Tell them, kids, can we draw 10 circles on our paper? And now I'm putting a timer of 30 seconds. Can you convert those 10 circles into 10 objects? That's all. That builds their observation power. 30 seconds, 10 circles into 10 objects. I've had students actually convert six circles into a single Lego block. Why not? Right? So you need to come up with these piecemeal little, little things that you can do in class as a break and it will work for you. It is definitely suitable for kids. Primary kids, I wouldn't, primary kids, it has to be slightly different. The ideation stage will be handled very differently. Actually, you don't even go into the five stages with primary kids. You forget design thinking and you start looking at developing their critical thinking, creative confidence, pattern identification skills. 
which when they grow up, they will start applying in these five stages and figuring out if it works for them. So you don't really touch the five stages for primary kids. The next we have a subject specific. <laughs> how do we implement it in our virtual classroom in a biology class of Nilima ma'am, I would think you should actually come up with a problem statement. Okay, which is relevant to your subject. Now, if you remember the example I gave you of Melissa, she was an English literature teacher talking about a book which was themed around bullying. So she just gave them a project saying, okay, how might we um, handle bullying in our school? Right? It's the link that you bring. And that becomes a separate project for them to work on. So you will have to do it that way because you can't teach using design thinking. Like you can't teach the curriculum per se. It's the skill, which is why I said passport of skills and not subjects. Do we and, have... uh, I think uh, uh, I think uh, there was an interesting comment which I saw from Spopnilson. He says it was interesting to think towards getting solution through a random word related to airplane, holiday, uh, crash, and passport. Absolutely. In fact, you will not believe if I had the time, I would have discarded airplane. I would have asked you to give me a random word built 25 associated words live for you and make sure that you see it works let me this is a very good point you brought up and i'm going to reiterate i'm going to mention this which i didn't mention design thinking the steps and the stages they seem a little kiddish because they are very intuitive okay and people therefore don't have faith in the process they feel that problem is too big to be put into a random word technique but it's not you must have faith in the process and it will give you answers. So thank you. Uh, and we're definitely going to do that in the masterclass. So yes. as I said, uh, the feedback form is there on my center. It has a question on, you know, where you can record your interest for the masterclass. We'll be doing this in the coming weeks. So yeah, please make sure that you answer that question and we'll get back to you. Yes. Great. Uh, mm, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just uh, scrolling through the okay. comment section for any other questions. We have, have three more. minutes. There's one yeah. more. Uh, during this COVID time, how will design thinking be helpful to students who are at home? It's a very interesting thinking mm -hmm. tool. So you can give teach them thinking and uh, in a different format. Imagine asking your parents to buy a set of post-its and telling your child that by telling the student that by tomorrow, I want you to have 25 post-its with 25 different features of for your new redesigned school bag. The child is going to love it. Just using the post-it makes it so interesting. We become a kid when we use post-its. So just imagine giving it to kids, right? So I think it's going to be very useful. From which grade can you start design thinking? Ideally, I would think third standard. Third standard is a great time to start design thinking, although I did see a huge difference when I was doing it for my son's seven-year-old friends, but they didn't carry it forward. That one exercise was great for them, but they didn't know how to apply it again when they were doing a project or the next something. So third standard is a great starting point. Another very subject-specific question. Mm, I think it should be in, uh, applied in accounting. I'll tell you why. That's one place you need to be really creative. <laughs> While you are surrounded with numbers and data, what story does this data tell you? How are you finding a pattern in all those numbers? Just asking yourself those questions itself has opened up your mind. Sometimes it's asking, and remember 70% of design thinking is about finding the right problem to solve, not solving. Solving is only 30%. Accounting is completely reverse. So I think this just helps you open up your mind. OK, that's for you. Uh, can we introduce design thinking in quadrilaterals chapter in maths? OK. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I'm sorry, I don't know if it involves critical thinking, creative thinking, pattern, and understanding patterns, problem solving. Yes, you can. I'm a language teacher, especially when we teach Hindi, bilingually, English also, they end up saying, really, we don't know Hindi. 
so the question here is how might we make hindi easy for non hindi speaking students right now that is how you define the question second the way to define could be how might we make hindi a funny language for students in general you just make it funny which means you ask them to pick up five words and you're going to throw those five funny words in between your class and they need to catch it it just increases their observation uh, listening skills right that every time i say any of these five funny words you need to raise your hand or show a thumbs up and i get a star something like that so it's not going to help again you know design thinking is a framework to come up with methods i would love to take this up as one of the questions when we do so it's all about taking real world challenges and if you can keep mentioning these real world challenges in the form uh, kartik if there is an option for them like a plain comment box it would be great mm -hmm. to sure. see these uh, real world challenges and we can use it and then set an idea on it and it's sure. totally doable i'm already sure. thinking so many ways mamta ma'am but this is not the right time sure absolutely and deepa ma'am has a very pertinent comment that she's made kids and... have lots of issues which is actually very large from their point of view absolutely so asking the peers to think of possible solutions for their friends would be enough absolutely and that's the collaboration we are talking about right that is where we are talking about empathy today how much do we talk about empathy we don't we talk about sympathy which is so different empathy is literally telling sitting next to them and listening to them what do you know what are you thinking what are you hearing what are you feeling asking those questions so if we can teach that you're right and it is it is a great way to get children uh, to think. we have seen that we've seen how it changes the thinking in adults like i have had a lot of my participants who all who are all professionals say i wish i could take this back home and teach my kid because i suddenly feel that they could use it in their project they can use it in their classroom they could use it for their next uh, you know science fair that they are going for so yes you're right and i'm, uh, I'm glad it's connecting yeah absolutely and abhilasha ma'am again has a very uh, i mean she's made a comment yes love the how my tree mm now it is upon us as how might we use the concept of design thinking with our team absolutely that's the right way to structure it how might we use the concept of and hold on to this question trust me go back and do a random word from that random word pick up three trigger words and see if you can rephrase your question into mini questions it will already open up some answers for you share it with me if you taken on my email id i would love to see where you reach with it and we'll uh, 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 you know uh, uh, put in reshma's email address yeah. and her instagram handle as a pinned comment here so you know when you come back and you can watch this video is going to be there on youtube so if you missed parts of it that's completely fine you can always come back watch it at your own pace and we'll have her instagram handle and her email address in the comment section as a pinned comment so you can reach out to reshma yes so yeah. uh, yeah, uh, yeah the feedback form is there on my center it's going to be there till 9 pm so take your time and you know uh, answer the questions and and mark your interest to attend the master class as well um i think we have covered all the questions uh yes and yeah sultan sir is saying it's important to teach students of the 21st century about this absolutely uh sure so uh i think uh, uh so I, I i don't think we've missed out There's one more, I think, just last one maybe. Um, can we use? Mm -hmm. Can it be used as forming a mind map, like giving a word aeroplane? I'm not sure what this means, uh, but I can tell you that this is mind mapping. Just that it is a random word mm -hmm. mind mapping because we want to push our boundaries for thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a final question: Rose buds and thorns technique. Uh, it's 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 there in this video. and uh, yeah so you can uh, rewind and then play it so uh, um sorry uh, sorry kartik so ma'am uh, rose buds and thorns while i have not explained this ideation technique in the because it is but it very simply means what's good emerging and bad what are the good ideas what are the emerging possible ideas and bad ideas sometimes we post uh participants write down bad ideas also because it makes them think from a different angle 
So it's about writing three types of ideas. Short form. Sure. Short form. I think we've uh, covered most of the questions. There are always a few questions which are left, I mean, constraints of time. Uh, but yeah, enroll yourself for the master class and we'll try to answer all those questions there. So. Uh, uh, sorry. Just can we use design <laughs> okay. to help children with special needs? Absolutely. But we need to be really careful to first design what we want to teach them and how we want to teach them. Design thinking. Uh, Forget COVID, OK? Let's not talk COVID for some time. Design thinking is actually about thinking with your hands. It forces people to use their hands, use Lego blocks, use posters, use chart papers to think and prototype. And that is what will come very handy when you're talking about special needs children. But it needs special focus and attention. I'm done. Sure. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot, Reshma. Uh, I mean, there were 500 of us who were live today. And uh, we've had some incredible sessions over the last 23 weeks. And this session is right up there with the best, I should say. And, and I could see that from the comments. So thanks a lot. Uh, uh, you know, Thanks a lot for agreeing to do this session for our teachers. We all love this. And uh, I'm sure all of us have a set of concrete takeaways that we can go back and start implementing in our uh, you know, virtual classrooms. So thank you once again. Uh, yeah. Uh, Yes, uh, the feedback from yes, sir, it's available there on my center, the same place that you used to register. Please go there and fill in the feedback form. It's going to be there till 9 p.m. Uh, yeah, that's 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 it. That's it from our side. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us, and we'll see you shortly on Thursday. Then, Thank you. yeah, Thank have you a great so evening, much. everyone. I messaged you my details so you can put it here. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.